the collaboration actually goes back uh, a very long time. Uh, the, the first projects between the academic sector in Ethiopia, let's say, and the, the Flemish universities goes back to 1997, which was mainly on soil and water conservation, and it was done together with Mekele University and uh, with, with Ghent University. That was uh, the, the small beginning, uh, but uh, it set a good example. Huh? And as we, uh, we say in Ethiopia, Tej be brille ne gerbe misale. So it set the example <laughs> exactly. for a lot of other things. Exactly. We had a, a few institutional university collaboration projects, IUC. Those are projects that span 10 years and are worth like 8 million euro. Mm. And the first such big project was actually started with uh, Mekele University, mm. and that ran from 2004 to 2014. And it was mainly also on soil and water conservation in Mekele, mm. dryland agriculture. Mm. Uh, another IUC started mm. in uh, Jima University, uh, and that started in 2006 until 2016. Uh, that uh, project that I was coordinating from Ghent University uh, stopped uh, last year, December 2016. Two new such IUCs have started, yeah. one in Bardar University and the mm. other one in uh, Arbaminch University. Mm. So uh, I can say that uh, it's never been as big as it is currently uh, has been since, uh, mm. since January 2017. You could even say that Ethiopia is the number one mm. for university development collaboration with Flanders because Ethiopia receives the largest budget mm. of all the countries that mm. uh, the, the university collaboration is collaborating mm. with, um, uh, closely followed by Cuba. There is a long tradition of collaboration with the uh, Flemish and Ethiopian universities. I think uh, the, the collaboration has been has been very successful. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I think we uh, generally, but certainly also in Jima University, we strongly believe in the capacity building part that we are doing. And capacity building for us in our project is mainly PhD research. Yeah. And that that is a mutual benefit. We both, I think, have advantages of having PhD students and doing research that is. Uh, important for the Ethiopian society. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, actually uh, joint PhDs that are delivered both by Ethiopian universities yeah. and Flemish universities. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a mutual benefit. You can do really unique research in, in, in Ethiopia because it's a unique country after all. It's, uh, it has lots of endemic species. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just to give an example, we have been doing lots of coffee research. We have been working on biodiversity of coffee. Uh, Jima is the origin of coffee. Uh, so uh, that, that is really tremendously important. Uh, the impact that our research can have on society. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give another example. Uh, we have been doing quite a bit of mastitis research. So mm -hmm. it means infection uh, of, of, of uh, the udder of the cow, which... Uh, decreases obviously a lot uh, the, the milk production mm -hmm. uh, and if you tackle that problem in, 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 in Jima, mm -hmm. like we were working with dairy farms uh, in Jima, mm -hmm. then you can easily double the milk production. Mm -hmm. What you do has a much larger impact mm -hmm. actually on, 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 on the society and on people that can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. For me, the, the main challenge uh, is that the, the brain drain is still really very consistent uh, yeah. also in our programs in the mm -hmm. sense that if we, if we have done good research with people and we bring them to a PhD, uh, then often these people uh, are escaping the country and going mm -hmm. to Belgium or to mm -hmm. US or sometimes to, mm -hmm. to other African countries, to mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's really a pity because we want to build sustainable uh, programs. So, and we hope that our current mm. uh, PhD students will mm. become promoters and supervisors of new PhDs in due time.
Yeah. Let me you know, try to first address your yeah. question. Why Jima? I don't yeah. know why Jima. <laughs> this is like many many things in life. This is yeah. pure. Yeah. Uh, this is purely by chance yeah. because I happened to to go to Jima accidentally and uh, uh, found myself up writing a project together with a friend there, and uh, mm. that's what what became the IUC. Yeah, Before that, there was no collaboration <laughs> at all with Belgium from Jima University side. Yeah. And that time, Jima University was a completely different university, of course, mm. Huh? Mm. with uh, maybe 7,000 students. Now it might be 35,000, I guess, or something around that number. Mm. So it has grown tremendously in all aspects, both scientifically, but infrastructure-wise, number of students, you name it, huh? also yeah. with respect to directions. So, uh -huh. And I think we, 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 we contributed a small bit mm -hmm. uh, at the top level, let's say, w when it comes to research and PhD, yeah. to establish a research culture at Jima University. Mm -hmm. That's what we were doing, uh, the small bit that, that we added to it. We are very proud of it. Mm -hmm. I think we started off with, uh, with this dream, together with Dr. Kaba at the time, who is now a state minister, but at the time was the, the, the vice chancellor. We strongly believed yeah. in, in building capacity uh, at PhD level. And that's yeah. what we did. So when this entire program will be finished, we'll, we'll have managed to finish like 50 PhDs in total. With, yeah. Apart from that, of course, there was yeah. a lot of infrastructure that was uh, put together. Mm. We established a lab of molecular biology, a lab of yeah. tuberculosis, of malaria, of drug quality, mm -hmm. all those infrastructures are there and, 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 and thriving and working well. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, it's mainly the research culture that has changed yeah. completely. Yeah. And um, as I already mentioned before, what we have been doing is actually shifting from yeah. entirely fully-fledged PhDs from Flemish universities yeah. to joint PhDs. And we started the network project okay. January 2017 with a few uh, other universities mm. uh, in, in Ethiopia, with Ambo University, yeah. with uh, Bishofto campus yeah. uh, of Addis Ababa University, which is the veterinary medicine campus, mm. and also with Awasa University. Yeah. So with those four partners, we are running the network, yeah. and the network is actually on health. But Together with that, my, my very good friend and colleague, coordinator Kora Tushune, yeah. uh, vice president of uh, Jima University, yeah. uh, he also pushed the yeah. Ministry of Education yeah. in Ethiopia a lot as well. So they decided that uh, we uh, are going to be given uh, 250 PhDs mm -hmm. in a time frame of 10 years. Mm -hmm where the Ministry of Education in Ethiopia is going to pay uh, the scholarship cost, yeah. uh, the accommodation yeah. and the traveling of the Ethiopian PhD scholar. I, I really like a lot yeah. that Ethiopia uh, and the Ministry of Education is, is really believing in this type of collaboration, yeah. in this capacity building effort and therefore wants to support it financially as well. Well, lots of things have happened, of course, yeah. since we started. Uh, and indeed, you grow from uh, one, two universities, one to two universities in the former millennium or century, yeah, yeah, yeah. to now 33 and soon 43. Yeah. And I think that's, that's been really important. And I believe mm. that it has been tremendously important, especially at the bachelor level. But of course, and we all know that, and you will agree with me, that, mm. that you, have, you pay a price for that to a certain extent, because you have uh, many more students, but yeah. the human resources are, of course, difficult to develop. So mm. at a moment in time, and especially at Jima University, mm. we were often a victim of that. There is a dilution of the human resources over all these other universities. Because if you, if you establish a new university, you yeah. need a vice chancellor, you, yeah. need, you need good academic staff as yeah. well. So yeah. often many people from Jima University actually, actually populated those other universities, as you know. But, yeah. but it's actually there that I think what we did was really important. Because you need to have people yeah. at a higher level, yeah. at a PhD level, and more and more people need to come into the system. Yeah. But I think that's now the challenge for Ethiopia. It's ensuring that you also get people with a PhD level that can teach at a master level. So if you establish an, an MSc program, you need PhDs to teach in that MSc program. And this is now the challenge for Ethiopia, I think, to ensure that you get, you get that other level so that the quality of the master training is also increasing and you get a good level throughout.